mutation MD. My case has been published in the American Journal of Human Genetics. My medical condition varies significantly among those affected by a specific genetic mutation. In my case, the, the disease affects my motor ability, but not my cognitive functions. Although my handicap has played a large role in my life, making difficult at times, I would never wish to be whole without it, because it makes me who I am. A physical challenge does not limit one's ability to live life and enjoy to the fullest. I try to always be positive and have a smile on my face, because I think I could be an inspiration to others. I want to show people that life is what you make of it, and dreams are never impossible. Every day I prepare myself for the challenges I will face. Some are going to be positive, and others are not. We have to redefine the negative events and challenges in our lives in order to face them effectively. If we take charge of our emotions and state of mind, then we're able to reshape daily life experiences into extraordinary ones. As a Greek philosopher, Epictetus once said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Many times in life, instead of accepting events for the way we are, we search and find a negativity that is not there. Other people and events cannot hurt us. It is instead our attitudes and reactions that can. We should define these events as temporary ones, because if we do not, they will lead us to forget our passions and what makes us unique. Sometimes we need to fail in order to learn how to succeed. Losing or failing is something that just happens in life. We will never define who we are. The pain that we suffer because of failures in life make us into more determined and more persistent individuals. We become stronger. Choosing to be positive can hinder pessimism since our disposition and outlook is within our control. It is our job to spread optimism to our friends, to our family, and to the community. Positive thinking accumulates and fills the world with better results. By looking at life as an adventure, we become what often no vengeance and peel calls possibilitarians. By being possibilitarians, we are able to raise our sights, no matter how dark a situation may seem to be. Always look for, always look for the possibilities, for they are always there. It is important to move forward and to have the courage to pursue our dreams and chase the impossible. I believe handicaps are just challenges that are made specifically for that person. With the support of those around us, we can mold ourselves to not only survive in society, but to also live in and be a part of it. Many people believe that childhood is the happiest and most carefree stage in life. However, many of us were bullied for the most insignificant things, like the clothes we wore, the toys we played with, or our physical appearance. Being treated with such prejudice early on in our lives can cause enormous amounts of an emotional damage. In my childhood, I had to face this, and I learned that the most effective way to get through it was to ignore it and be hopeful about my future. In addition, I learned that good can come out of these difficult experiences. Because of what I've been through in my life, hope has become an integral part of it. The day we lose hope for a better tomorrow is the day we inadvertently impose limits on ourselves. I encourage you to never lose hope in a better tomorrow, because hope never stops growing. Always keep faith that there is something bigger and better for you. God has a purpose and a plan for us on this earth. We are perfect just the way we are. I have learned that a disability does not limit one's enjoyment of life at all. In an odd way, a disability can be quite liberating. Mine has given me a different and very superficial view of the world, and this unique outlook makes all the difference. I am truly grateful for every day I live because I am able to share my happiness and optimism with others. Helen Keller, who was deaf, blind, and mute once observed, self pity is our worst enemy, and if we yield to it, we can never do anything good in the world. If we as human beings pity ourselves, we will never succeed. The point is to hit the ground running, no matter the situation. Pity is worth nothing to people with disabilities. The most important thing for them is equality. For some time now, I've been passionate about the rights and tools that people like me need to thrive in this society and confront their challenges. I 
and you're encouraging and inspiring people, along with giving them hope. I can be a positive example of how to cope with adversity and be resilient. This is all the better. I believe that no matter the situation, there is a will. If there is a will, there is a way. Even when there appears to be no way, have faith, and with God's help, you'll we'll find a solution to your problem. The tools exist. What matters is having the courage, the support, and the opportunity to discover and utilize these tools to their fullest advantage. I encourage you to find your purpose in life, because it is terrifying to live without it. Purpose gives your life meaning by doing something you enjoy. Never give up on yourself, because your life is truly unique. Everyone has a disability, except mine is visible. I share a firm belief with the motivational speaker, Nick Gucci was born without arms or legs. As Nick said, so many people are handicapped by fear of failure, fear of making mistakes, fear of commitment, even fear of success. It's inevitable that these fears will come knocking on your door. You don't have to let them in. He asked, I promise you, for every disability you have, you are blessed with more than enough abilities to overcome your challenges. The Bible says, have the will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Out and the door shall be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door shall be open. My faith had my faith. My faith has helped me in the most difficult times. I wonder if I had to be born with a disability. Could I have been a mistake of God? I experienced fear throughout my young life that I would be alone and a burden to my family. My parents wondered how my disability fit in with God's plan. Although my disability makes me who I am, it has been a source of both suffering and of happiness. But I learned that God does not give us challenges we can't handle, because these challenges are meant to help us grow as individuals. With every challenge, there is a reward waiting to be discovered. Every time I pray, I give God thanks for giving me the strength and wisdom to cope with physical and mental challenges of being born with a handicap. I ask him to guide me in my journey through life and give me what is best for me. I realize I have a purpose in this world, just like everyone else, to inspire others in many ways and be a source of joy. I have the same goals, interests, and hobbies as any other PC student. I deal with the same problems and concerns. I study for exams, I write papers, and I read for sit. Well, most of the time. I look forward to graduation and getting a job. My transition from high school to college has been up to now the hardest thing I have ever faced in my life, just as this could have been the same for some of you. Moving from Puerto Rico to Providence College was the greatest challenge change I ever experienced. My life was changing not only academically, but also poetry. I was leaving everything I had known my entire life. The biggest worry on my mind was, how was I going to do this alone? Although I, was, although I was away from my parents every day I went to high school, I would see them when the school day was all over. My parents also wondered how I would be able to do things all on my own. Even with all their worries, they encouraged me to go to college in the United States to receive a high level of education and to become independent. I tell you, I first asked myself, what was I doing here? Why did I decide to leave my home? I came from a very small school, about 250 students. I experienced a huge shock my first time on campus when I saw that I had 991 classmates that I barely knew. I felt alone. I asked myself every, I asked myself every day, would people see me for who I am and not my handicap? Initially, I felt that people were apprehensive to ask me about my medical condition. At the same time, I was afraid to let them know about it. However, once my friends had asked me, I was happy because I knew they wanted to get me, they wanted to get to know me as a person. I learned a lesson from this. We cannot be afraid of rejection for something we cannot control. As Frederick Douglass once said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Some days, but not many, we don't feel like getting out of bed. Starting day, starting every day is challenging, from getting breakfast to getting around school. In the end, what carries us is that we should live life, as told by the famous college coach, John Jimmy Valvano, who said, if you laugh, you think, and you cry, that's a full day, that's a heck of a day. You do that seven days a week, you're going to have something special. This is why I encourage you to never give up, especially on yourselves, because you never know what you might, what you might discover. Ever since arriving at Providence College, I've met people who have helped shape me to who I am, who have taught me that I'm not alone in this journey. <coughs> There's one experience that really stood out to me in my freshman year. That was the problems at the wee hours of the night. People would start running out the door, and I had to 
so I ride a wheelchair and roll out. The teachers are proud as college care for the students and want to see them succeed. The experiences I've had in the classroom and outside have transformed me into, into a confident, adaptable, and resilient person. The camaraderie of Providence College has laid me over with the fact that I have a handicap. I love that students at BC see me for who I am, not just because I have the most awesome wheels on campus. This is why I believe that God gives each human being specific paths and abilities, not only for the benefit of themselves, but also for others. I have faced many challenges, and I'm living life as though I had no limits. I am proud to call myself a student of Providence College. I wake up every day with a positive attitude, because I'm anticipating a day filled with everything I love to do. For these reasons and more, my decision to come to Providence College has turned out to be one of the best and most powerful choices I have ever made. Education is important because it is empowering. This gives the knowledge which can be used as a tool for developing the character of the individual. Also, had it not been for my dedication to education, I would have not been able to call myself a student at Providence College. My educational goals are to acquire leadership experience at Providence College so that I can have a positive impact on the world. I hope to not only develop my potential as a student, but also improve my communication skills in order to better set forth my message. My career goals are to live a life of service, social consciousness, and to be a positive influence in my community through hard work and dedication. My life of service will be marked by advocating for places to become more handicap accessible. Increasing accessibility will help people such as myself and everyone in that community. We must work hard and care enough to advocate for those who can. Despite the circumstances life has given us, we should always work hard and stay positive about our future. Strength of character and goodwill to others.